Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and hitting or subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps the channel grow. Even better, tell your friends all about the best wine show anywhere. Come on, man, help me out. Anyway, welcome to my series of reviews of wines from Domaine Bousquet. I've reviewed several of their wines over the uh, past few years. If this is your first time seeing any of my reviews of their wines, please check out the first video of this series about the Sauvignon Blanc. I cover the background of the winery and the region in that video. All right, so let's just get into the stats of this wine. The 2020 Domaine Bousquet Virgin Organic Red Blend suggested retail price is $13. It's from the Guatiari Valley in Tupangato, Uco Valley, Mendoza, Argentina. The blend is 35% Malbec, 35% Cabernet Sauvignon, and 30% Cabernet Franc. It is a certified organic vineyard. It is a USDA organic wine, no added sulfites. Hand harvested, 1,200 meters or 3,900 feet in elevation. The soil is gravel and sand. All right, like the last virgin wine, I couldn't find a text sheet for the 2020 uh, wine on their site, so I used the 2019 one, and it should be pretty close. All right, so the rest of the stats. The ABV is 14.4%. 14.4%, the TA is 5.55 grams per liter, the pH is 3.75, and the residual sugar is 1.31 grams per liter. Now that's less than the last wine. All right, so in case you didn't watch the, the Virgin Malbec episode, no added sulfites is a wine sold in the U.S. that meets the USDA's organic wine standards in regards to having only naturally occurring sulfites. These sulfites must have less than 10 parts per million. That's not hard, but there may be ones that end up with more. If that happens, then they have to have the contains sulfites statement. Also, yes, wines from the EU also have a contains sulfites statement on the label since 2005 for wines with at least 10 parts per million. Now, why am I making such a big deal about the sulfites thing? Well, one, that's the legal standard and two, there's this, I don't know, persistent misconception that sulfites are causing people to get headaches or all kinds of stupid things from drinking wine when it's not the sulfites. I will have an episode of that coming up eventually, all about what sulfur and sulfites do to wine and why they are not evil. All right, so let's get into the wine. Throw the screw cap, grab the little thing at the end here. Alrighty, this is the last, the bousquets I'm doing, and then I have two more wines from Portugal to do. But we've got something cool from Argentina to do. Because I do the red blend. We got Malbec, Cabernet Sauvignon, and uh, Cabernet Franc. Double check that. Make sure I remember the blend again. Yep. All right. Nope, color. Yeah, I got enough. So I have a kind of a deep concentration. It's more red than necessarily ruby, but it's kind of ruby and red. And the Malbec still is coming through. There's a little bit of that electric quality of the color on the edge. But it's not as it's not as um, prominent as the other Malbecs I, I did. You know, I would call it medium plus staining on, on the on the glass. Uh, definitely medium plus tearing. Let's check it out. Definitely medium plus on the aromatics. It's definitely youthful. So I think in this one, 
instead of Malbec being the lead player and like the last two wines, there's, I think, more of a balance uh, in the wine. You're getting more of just a fruit quality to it, but you're getting a little more black fruit to this. You're getting more of that blackberry rather than just being a red fruit dominant, a little bit blue fruit on here. There's a richness to it. Fresh earth. I think I, I think if I was smelling this blind, I probably would think there's some oak on this, but I I would probably say I think there's a little bit of new oak, but I would be I would wait till I got to the palate to confirm that hypothesis. So let's go take the palate. Oh, this dry. Woo. So on the palate, I would even though my oak call would not be immediate in my head. Be like, yeah, there really isn't any oak on this. This is lush, ripe fruit. And it's, it's all fruit. Like the last the wine from last week, where I was talking about a little bit of, a little bit of that coffee. There's none of that here. It's black fruit for days. Blackberry, really a lot of blackberry, a little bit of raspberry. So we got some red fruit in there, but it's mostly a black fruited wine. It dominates that a little bit of fresh earth on that, and 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 that's that's your flavor profile. I mean, it's 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 just lush, ripe fruit, and a touch of earthiness, but no oak characteristics at all. The tannin, I would call this high tannin, not quite Barolo, but pretty darn close. I mean, it's building. I mean, I still feel it, and I haven't had a sip for a good thirty seconds, maybe even a minute. So. Um, there's a freshness to it. There's a crispness to it. The acidity, I think, is kind of elevated. I mean, I know the numbers probably don't say that. Not really. I mean, it's actually, based on pH, a little bit lower in intensity. But I think, you know, it's, I think the last few days I've been a little more sensitive to acid in these red wines. I think the wine is well balanced. I think there's a... There's a medium intense, medium complexity to it, but I think the finish is pretty long. Framed by the tannin and that Christmas, that little, making, you know, making your mouth water a lot. The alcohol is well contained. I don't really feel the alcohol as much. I don't notice it as much at 14.4%. 14, 14 I really actually like this wine of, of the group that I've already done tonight. I think this is the one I like the best. And 13 bucks, yeah, I'm all about 13 bucks. I bet you my teeth are getting all black and stained right now. I like the wine, especially at that price point. We're talking, you know, organic wine making processes. Be that as made, there are some awesome wines that are not organic by, by any means, but I kind of appreciate wineries that are moving towards that type of farming and then winemaking practices. I feel it's an added bonus. And I think Argentina and Chile are countries that really lead in having these, especially Argentina, in having these organic, well, actually Chile too, organic wines. A lot of their climate is conducive to farming organically, whereas a lot of other places in the world, the humidity is too high, or not too high, but higher, and that introduces a lot of disease pressure, which means you need to actually spray synthetic chemical pesticides. The fertilizer, not as much, but a lot of farmers do use fertilizer, but in Argentina and Chile, there's less of a need for that. So <clears throat> they're able to have these 100% or organic wines or at least a lot more made with organic grapes types of wines anyway that's going to do it for today's show i just want to thank my good friends at creative palette kate and jane for supplying these wines and their continued support throughout the entire well about four or five years they've been sending me samples so if you enjoy uh, what i'm doing here make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and then tell your friends and until next time get you some cool uh argentine wine